So yeah, like a script, um, a script monkey in the syntax tree, what are we talking about today? It's going to be quickly about uh, the AST and um, ISC, and maybe some of you were here last year and saw that in my Empire Strike demo, I kind of automated the writing of the module. And some people ask, hey, that looks cool. Can you, can you talk about this? So this is what I'm presenting today. Again, there's probably no real application to it, or maybe a couple I can think of, and we'll, we'll discuss that at the end. But it's just, it's just to have fun and to show how PowerShell is fun and what you can do with it when uh, you get bored. So that's who I am. Again, the same. Uh, work in Germany for a company called ERNW. And again, if you're into AD security or anything, I would encourage you to have a look at the content of our conference we gave last year. That's all for the commercial bit. Uh, yeah, French, live in Holland, work in Germany, and uh, PowerShell bad boys, the same thing if you were here last year at the talk downstairs, somewhere around the 14 minute mark, a fellow, I will not say his name, but shouted I was a bad boy. So now I wear it, I wear it with pride. Um, again, my kids, thinking about you guys. And um, again about this, because I, I got dust at the beginning of the week. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, thanks everybody. I feel like this is a bit over what I would uh, deserve or anything. And maybe it's just a sign that all of you should and will submit for next year, uh, whatever you're doing, and you can end up on stage and be recognized for it. So again, yeah, thanks. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks. I could cry, so don't don't push it too hard. I'm kind of I'm kind of a sensitive guy. Anyway, so in this session, uh, yeah, stuff you can do with PowerShell when you have way too much time. Um, I used to work for a company where we did automation. I used to work with the app, so that's why you saw him on there. And we used to automate our job so as to have more time because, like, they didn't really know how quickly you could get done stuff with automation. So we had a lot of time off. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about the, and yeah, the company is closed and they fired 25 of us. So. <laughs> we're going to talk about the PSISC object. And I'll show you that the tool, you can do the same thing in uh, VS Code with the PS editor object. The only thing, my code is a year old and I think the PS editor object changed. So I'm going to demo everything in ISC that doesn't change anymore. We're going to talk about the AST. There's going to be a bit of Bob and Alice, probably some IC art somewhere in there. Uh, or Bib Tunes, I should have taken it out. Something wrong with the sound. We can try it anyway. And then uh, if you're nice or if you're hungry at the end, maybe a slice of pizza. Um, yeah, <laughs> cool. So on the agenda, it's going to be mostly demo. I don't have much slides. We're going to play a bit with the IC, uh, PSIC object. I'll show you what properties there is and what you can do with it. Basically, ISC, your whole ISC is an object, and you can like go down the rabbit hole in that object. It's quite cool. Then we're going to come back from the rabbit hole and climb up the AST. And here, uh, yeah, for me, it's the most poetic stuff I ever heard, the abstract syntax tree. So when I heard that, I thought, I want to, I want to check it out. And I got kind of addicted to it. It's really cool. Probably there's more useful stuff you can do, like uh, Daniel Bohannon using it to kind of uh, see where AMSI would catch you. The ST is a fantastic way to look at your, your scripts bit by bit. Bob and Alice and Script Monkey. So all, all of these are demos. Uh, before we start, <coughs> so since Jeffrey Snover is not at uh, the PowerShell uh, team anymore, and he decided, I decided to stop with memes. So no more PowerShell memes. So I will not be using this one in my deck. <laughs> I can't. I can't. And I know some people are going to be sad, like at least those two, maybe some of you, my fan base. Uh, for so, But I, instead, I will do like a memes on AI, because <laughs> now he's working with AI. So AI is quite cool. Um, and let's jump straight into the demos. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I have a big French nose. So. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I saw Carlos just before, and I'm just going to do my classical demo god uh, stuff, especially because I think some of the demos will fail, but we'll see. So this is... Show me what you got. 
Game of Gods. And if it doesn't work, if, if it's not enough, if I fail my demos, we can always sacrifice a VM. Usually that works. I saw Byte Bleeder do it on stage and it worked, so uh, if I fail, we'll do that. Now, seriously, uh, the PSIC object. So very simply, when you open IEC, there is this variable that is created, that is your PSIC uh, object, and that's what it looks like. So an object, and then you see already the option, the current PowerShell tab, the current file, or more objects, and you can start to dive into it. So for example, uh, yeah, a lot more, but here you will find the colors, everything. You see, I, I also changed you the, the, the title of my window, and you can like customize your own work environment. Again, it's pointless, but it makes me really happy, so I like using those kind of stuff. You can, for example, yeah, set the zoom. Is it good for everybody? I forgot to ask. 155. Up one. Let's do it like so. A little more. So, 165. You good? Cool. So, yeah, mo manipulating the options, you can do like uh, modify everything. What I do when I do this, like with my kids. So, when I do hacking, I put the hoodie theme on. And this is quite cool, you can like, you start, you know, if it's more. If I run Mimikatz, you saw like <coughs> a dark operator running Mimikatz, so I have a special Mimikatz theme to make it look like you're really hacking, and when people come back behind me, I just quickly poof, and nobody sees what I'm doing. <coughs> Let me maybe, or we do it during the question, I'm going to run through the demo. Anything you see here are like custom pointless commandlets I wrote. If you have any question about this, then during the questions we can look at the code and uh, have fun with it. Actually, like changing your, your prompt is not that easy. I have to find a workaround and I'll, I'll explain that. So you can look at the current tab and you will see all the uh, explanations, see what's loaded in there, see, so the, this object is a... Uh, Quite simple, but mostly the, the way I use it, if you take the current file and then you dive into the current file.editor object, this is the one we're going to be uh, using a lot, so I put it in a variable here. And if we look at the, the methods and the, the properties on this object, you're going to see some uh, interesting stuff already. So selected text, line count, caret, column. So caret is where your cursor is uh, placed on the, in the script pane. And you see methods here that you can start to select the carrot line, set the carrot position, and so if you saw the demo last year, you know where this is going. I'm going to be using it later to move around the script pane and uh, insert some uh, some uh, commands or some, some text on it. So for example, going to a line, <coughs> Uh, if I say line equals two, because I use it several times later, and then I'm going to go to uh, line number two and insert some text very quickly. So this is how you would do it. And then um, getting the selected text, that's also uh, useful when you want to manipulate everything. So here, the command is a bit more complicated. The select, you have to give it the start line, uh, caret line, then the start caret column, then the start line again, or the end line, sorry, and then the end column of the, the line you're looking at. So here, very simply, with the line as a variable, and here again, the editor get line length to get the line of whatever length, the length of whatever line you're on. Then you can uh, very simply, so I'm going to run this and select the text that is on this line, for example. So here I selected this uh, hello world that I inserted earlier. And with the same uh, principle, you could replace this with some uh, other text. For example, the yeah, Abbasa is awesome. That's what I think. Uh, but here, for example, using once you selected the line, it's like if you were at the cursor, basically, but you're doing it programmatically. So I select the line. Whatever I type will replace everything that's in there. So once you, it's an easy way to overwrite uh, things. Did any of you play with this object already, or did you guys know that it was here? Yeah? To do what? <laughs> I'm curious, maybe I get some more cool ideas, you know? That's another one of my cool command is set clipboard. You can do so much cool stuff with that. Yeah, get the clipboard, put it somewhere else. 
out of a hidden window or run some code without people knowing using send keys for example <laughs> you can do you can do a lot of cool stuff okay so that was the the first bit that's for the editor so in the code later each time you see something the variable editor you can know that I'm referring to using this PSIC object and whatever property uh, down the rabbit hole now the next uh, thing we're gonna add and this yeah for me is the I don't know it's it's like a constant source of hey what's in there and the more you dig the more you find stuff I'm I'm a beginner so like I said you could all be on stage and teach me something so I'm happy I'm here to show you stuff but probably maybe some of you know this already but yeah the, the AST is a, a fantastic way to also learn I think PowerShell because once you I don't have the right vocabulary to name all the bits of the script but if you start playing with the AST long enough you will have the exact terminology and I'll show you what this looks like so this command here I'm using is the the, the way to um, store the DST in a variable and uh, at the same time so system management automation language parser parse input and we give it the whole text that in the editor so now you know how I get that from the the editor variable and then you that's the the overload so you give them a reference for the token where he's going to store all the tokens and a reference empty for the errors for now where he's going to store all the errors if there were to be any er errors on the script at the the moment you parse it so if i run this i get an st and this is just uh, let's have a look. this is just a very long series of object and like the first object you get is the parent and then there's nesting so it's like the scope your 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 IC script pane is the first scope that's the, the parent the full AST and then within this you're gonna have other ASTs nested 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 until you reach to the end of it and then you move to the next line but every element on the line is a nesting of several ASTs depending on what you write of course so in the ST it's an object, a specific type of object. So it comes with its own uh, properties and methods. You see it's a script block AST we have here. And um, there's a method to visit it. And I think uh, that's what uh, Matthias will demo shortly, uh, a pure AST visitor. He talked about it. That looks cool. Mine is just, I just use the function and tap directly into the, the AST I'm looking at. I'm not doing the whole uh, recursing in it. And then you can have a look. So the property HST has a parent, has an extent. And this is also how we know with the cursor how to select and stuff. So the extent will start to remind you of the extent or the carried position that we saw in the editor object. And um, let me see what do I have here for the ST I wanted to show you. So for example, yeah, the extent will be using uh, a lot and it gives you the text, but you have a start offset and end offset, and you should have other pro yeah, of course, it's going to be long. Uh, start script position, end script position, start line number, start column number. So not only do you have the text and what it is, so saying uh, get date is a function, uh, a command, but you also have the position exactly where it's located on, on, on the script pane. And once I saw that, I thought, okay, I can start to manipulate stuff. So there's this um, ST find all, and here we're gonna get the overload. So it's a bit of a, I don't know, for me it looks strange, but you have to say AST find all, pass it a script block that evaluates the condition. Here I'm passing it true, so it's, it's gonna return all the different uh, type of ASTs we have. And the second true here is just to say if you're gonna be uh, recursing or not, so search nested script blocks. So if you're gonna go down, and search or just look at the first layer you're, you're looking at basically and if I get this so now I do the find all with a true true and then for each get type name sort unique you're gonna see that already here in the, in the script pane that I have uh, that's all the different type of ASTs oops that uh, we're looking at so all of these are different elements of your script and that's also uh, more using tokens but that's also how he colors while you're typing in the script pane you see the coloring coming in well, that's how the the, the parser uh, parses your and uh, find the token to colorize them and each token has a matching color in your IC editor object and this is why you can change the the, the theme 
well, not really in ISD. In ISC, it doesn't look great, but that's how you change the theme of ISC to change background colors and uh, tokens and colors and everything. For example, here, then I'm going to um, uh, search for all the ASTs that uh, represent a command AST. So this is here how you, in your find all command, evaluate to true. So argument zero of whatever you're going to be looking at is a system management, and here you put one of these that you would have found in the, in the list of what we have. So everything we have, I can now say, hey, now show me all the command ASTs in all this uh, script, or show me all the command expression ASTs, and so on. So here I'm going to store it just in an object, and we can have a look. Uh, for example, the first one that he found here was the command uh, invoke demo god, the one that we ran in the, in the beginning. And this object, you could start to look at the extent of it and uh, the start script position, the command element. So every object then has, again, the own properties that you can dive into. It's huge, so I'm not going to do a detailed uh, understanding of the AST. I don't understand it myself fully. But it's an invitation, just when you don't know it, to just dive in there and see what you can uh, tinker with it and try it. That's the way I do it. I know some people learn in the book and kind of go on with the knowledge. I kind of start with zero and bang my head until I, I get there. So you can look again, this object, the, this command that we have, invoke demo god, is inserted in a bigger context, a bigger ST, and that's the uh, parent XT here where you see the the rest of it, and the parent has his own extent and so on. So you can really like navigate the whole depth of the AST and then come back up by dotting parent, parent, parent as many times as you need or stuff like this. Is it okay so far? You, uh, you, you, you. Who has already played with the AST for other reasons? Yeah, you, I guess. Okay, a few, a few. Well, all the rest, I would say go home, just parse whatever script you have and like look at your script from a tree perspective instead of seeing all the, the leaves from the top. You kind of see the branching and how it, it's built. And I find it quite, uh, quite interesting. With all this, um, <clears throat> oh, I forgot the timer. It's pointless now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get that. So with all this, um, I wrote a little demo, and I hope this one is going to work. Let me just take a new script pane. So those shortcuts I will show you. Like I said, I have uh, shortcuts for ISC one letter or two, just to uh, to be quick. There's no point in being that quick, but I just found it cool. Um, let me just think what I'm doing now. We're going to run this, uh, Bob, Alice, and Jane. And this is like an automated demo, so I'm just going to let it run, and then we go and uh, look, at the, look at the code. Hello, PowerShell Conference Europe. My name is Bob. I am here today with Alice. Hi, folks. And we will show you how to write functions from the prompt in ISE. This is going to be awesome. Let's get started. First, I start with the function definition. Let's call it Invoke Jane. New function. Name. Invoke Jane. Alias. Jane. Synopsis. Invoke. Jane. Demo. Template. Max. And hit enter. Wow. Awesome. I know, right? <laughs> now I add some parameters. First things first, the text parameter. This one will be mandatory. Newbrum. Name. Text. Type. String. Mandatory. True. Value from pipeline. True. Position. Zero. And hit enter. Next, the emoji parameter. Newbrum. Name. Emoji. Type. Emoji name. Mandatory. False. And hit enter. And I add a default value for it. Set room. Name. Sorry. Emoji. Default value. Alice. 
and hit enter. Nice. Just like me. Then, I add a color parameter. New broom. Name. Color. Type. Console a color. Mandatory. False. And hit enter. What color should we do Alice? Green. Everybody loves green. Okay Alice, let's go for green. Set room. Name. Color. Default value. Green. And hit enter. Now I add the rate parameter. New room. Name. Sorry about rate. that. Rate. Uh, Mandatory. I False. After. I just and hit enter. And with the same technique I set a validate range and default value for it. Finally, I add some switches for more control, voice only and async. And there you go, the base for invoke Jane is ready. Now all I need to do is add my commands to this function. Wow. This is truly awesome. I think we need to celebrate. How about a party parrot? Hell yeah. Party carrot. So, yeah, sorry about the, it was a bit long, I admit. I should have done less with the, the typing. So this is what the, the command for this uh, demo look like. Uh, so you have a command for Bob, a command for Alice, and you can write. So I wrote this because I want to make little, maybe uh, scripts or maybe YouTube video for my son. He's 12 year old, he watches too much YouTube. So I want him to, now I told him each time you go to YouTube, I tell you to open PowerShell. So he opens the prompt, but he has no clue what to do. 3 plus 2, nani, we made the voice commands, we made the emoji commands. And now I want to make little, little uh, tutorials, fully automated, because I'm like consulting the whole week and not always at home. But at least I can like send him some little exercises where he can like see somebody type a command and type it. And so I found this fun. It's pointless, but I just... I like funny stuff. And this is what it looks like, so you can write your own demos with it, but mostly here each time I'm, I'm using the commands, and these are the commands that I'm going to show you in the script monkey uh, um, module now. And these are the commands that I used to automate the whole, uh, the whole stuff from IC. But just let's just make sure that our, um, our function works. So I'm putting this in my clipboard, going back to the function, and finally, like, this is the part that I guess most of us are comfortable with, is writing script. What this tends to show that writing the, 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 the function to, to put your script in is actually quite easy. Once you know what you're looking at, where to put stuff, it's just a matter of saying it. And you can write commandlets for it, and stuff always goes in the same place. So it's actually a bit like a CSV, and this is how Afterwards, I automate out of a CSV. Well, we're just going to put this in there. We're going to F8. Oops. Green errors. I told you we'd see some. Speech is an empty string. What are you telling me here? Does anybody see speech on there? Probably that worked. So if I ask for uh, help, so if you help, you see that because you wrote your um, comment base help, this is already done for you. What I really like also, and this is the advantage of like writing your function wrapper behind writing your script, is that you can already see your syntax. So I can do view syntax, and you will get the, the syntax that we wrote already. So. I find this fantastic that we actually only wrote the body of our function and all this is already created for us. We all take it for granted because we use PowerShell, but other languages don't necessarily have this feature and I think it's, it would be nice to recognize it all together for PowerShell. PowerShell. Because, no, because documentation is really important and it tends to be what we skip, and having this step already done, if you just put the right stuff in the right place where you, when you write your command, goes a, a long way. Of course, now I would have to come in and fill in the description, 
describe a bit my examples and maybe change a few stuff. But at least already the, the structure is here and you can already have a look at the syntax. And this starts to make sense when you build a whole module using approved verbs, of course, but mostly like that your parameters make sense in all your command lists. A bit like what Carlos said earlier in his talk, he has two command lists that kind of go the same way but use different parameters. The user find this confusing, so it's a way to have a, a play with the syntax even before you execute any command within your, your command lists, basically. So now that we did this, uh, if everything works correctly, we should be able to ask uh, Jane to say hello. Hello, world. You notice this uh, lovely English accent because I'm using the Hazel voice this time instead of the Zira voice. So if you have a European computer, you have an extra UK voice in it. So that's cool. Uh, and yeah, like I said, the help is already built. Not only what I showed you, the, the syntax, but the, the full um, the full description. It's like, it's like there's quite a lot that is that is written for you, and you don't have to do it. So I just. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jeffrey. Now is the moment where we get to the demo that I um, I showed last year, so the script monkey. I wanted to show it again this year, but I uh, took the whole folder and the code that runs over the CSV wasn't here anymore. So apologies. I tried to rewrite the code this morning and I missed a few good sessions because of this. And then I gave up because I wasn't on time and I said, don't stress, just admit it. You failed, so if anybody has tomatoes, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Thanks. So what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to play the, the video from uh, last year, since it's online, that technology is beautiful. And uh, I'm going to describe what's happening. So I was using the CSV that I will show you. I'm taking a new script pane, and then I was calling this uh, function, CSV monkey. And it was basically starting to write the whole the whole module out of um, out of the three CSVs, and uh, yeah, that's what you see here. And you see me commenting, me commenting, the guy writing. <laughs> that's quite cool, quite cool. So uh, what we're going to do now, of course, is you you came for code, so you want to see code. Let's stop this. But this was the idea. It goes on. It writes a whole 20, 20 commandlets like this. Well, at least the body of it, and then you just have to put your your scripts in there. Um, all these great commands, I have them in my profile. There's my, <laughs> my profile is a mess. Yeah, Brasser wants it. I refuse to give it to him because there's like too much cool stuff in there. But um, so where are we going to go? Sorry. The demo god, the parrot parrot. Yeah. I told you I have a lot of great stuff in there. Said clip. Sometimes he tell me it took like four seconds something, yeah. That depends a bit on what machine I'm on, but yeah. I'm not in a hurry usually, so. I gain time later by automating, so I can lose a bit in, <laughs> I, I can lose a bit in the beginning, but it's good. Um, still not, okay, that's where it starts, so. I'm going to run over the code like a real session, and if you guys have questions, or if you guys think, hey, you should, no, if you think, hey, you shouldn't do it like this, don't tell me. Um, like I said, I'm sensitive. I know that I write wrong code, and uh, slowly I'm getting better. If you're, if, if, yeah, I mean, if you see an error, come and tell me after. Or uh, you could have been more efficient, but don't tell me I was wrong. Please, <laughs> for my own ego. So with the first command we have is just the parse code or uh, parse or p to go quicker. And basically what you're going to find in there is exactly the, the one I showed you. That's the centerpiece of this commandlet. And then once I have the, I return the AST, I store in a script monkey. So I define the script monkey here uh, before. And I store in this object all the, all the stuff I'm going to use later for tab completion and the, the AST itself, basically. So we parse the code. So you do see here. I'm drawing some stuff to see if I'm in VS Code or IAC. I think that even changed, so I will have to look at how to determine. But then the difference, so, and that's why the code was a bit more complex to write for the two platforms. The PSIAC object and the PS Editor object are not the same object. So I cannot 
completely use the same code and I each time have to look, okay, what, that property that I find on the PSISE, where do I find it on the PS editor? And not everything a year ago was in there. I know they've added some stuff, so I would have to uh, look into it. But uh, I'm busier than what I can uh, deliver. So for now, it stays on hold. I, there's no production hanging on this, so I don't really have an urge. And I don't think anybody else than me is using it. So I'm cool. Um, and yeah, we do it. So we store everything, the errors, the, the tokens. Uh, then I have a command let get tree where here you can specify uh, what uh, tree you you want to look at and eventually uh, restrict that to a parent. So in this parent tree, give me all the functions. So this is a way to kind of subdivide your, uh, we can have a look maybe, get tree and then there's probably a type. And if I say every type. So here when I say type, I get type completion on exactly what is in my script pane. This is using the dynamic uh, parameters. I kind of like them because they save a lot of type com uh, they save a lot of typing by giving you type completion. The code to uh, to get them sorted that's for only one parameter. So the dictionary the dictionary here and here you do always, but this bit is what it takes of code to create one dynamic parameter. Now, uh, this was a year ago, now what I do is I have a function called dynamic parameter that returns the parameter, so I can from the command line, instead of writing all this, just pass the attributes I want and he returns that object to put in the dictionary. But this is how verbose it is in reality to declare a, a dynamic parameter. Uh, but the, the benefit, like I said, is that here I cannot ask for an AST that is not in my um, in my script pane because he's dynamically, when I run the command, I'm checking and telling me. So I can ask for all the script blocks, for example. I can ask for all the attributes, command expressions. So all the different type of objects are now here, and we can start to uh, to manipulate them. That was the get tree. I have a get token. And this is a slightly different. So I think token was the, I'm going to say something wrong and people, I think it was the old school way of doing it, PowerShell v2 only, and then came the AST. And I'm not, I'm not both by it or <laughs> I listen to those talks. I remember it and then I forget. Uh, <laughs> I have a bit of a goldfish memory. But I remember that it came after and that the tokens are still here and the coloration is uh, done with the token, but the AST is a more precise. You're not looking at strings only, but you're looking really at an object with different properties and different uh, different uh, methods. So get token, uh, did I put anything dynamic here? Yes. So get token function, for example, will return all the tokens all the tokens that are a function. And then again, using the editor object, you can start select, selecting those objects by using the extent. And this is what I do in the, in the CSV uh, demo or in the commandlets that I'm going to show you now. Get error is the, I know you can do your error zero and uh, get it that way, but uh, I kind of like to make it more more compact, so that's what my my errors look like, giving me the line number, the column number, and then just the message and a little shrug, because like it happens. And it's just a green again, because it's an invitation to learn something more than a snap on your fingers. But yeah, you know that. Uh, get function tree, so this is the same than get tree, but for me it was quicker to write something that gets all the functions. So here again, a dynamic parameter to get all the name of my functions. And let me see, get function tree, name, there's only one, oh, yeah, no, right, because the ST I'm looking at is probably the, the one from the last time I parsed the script pane, so let's do it again, get function tree, name, and this time you see I have much more to complete from because that's my dyna dynamic parameter went to get all the all the commands that I have on this uh, in my profile. And you do see that it's not only linked to uh, to the script monkey. Sorry. Oops. 
get pam tree is the same than function, but for a given function, you get the parameters this time. And probably I have here get extend. So if I pass it a, a, an AST, you see the object I'm passing is a tree or a, an AST. Then he can directly give me the extent. That's again a shortcut. Like most of the commands are very small. They don't only do one little tiny action. That's the way I like to have my uh, Lego bricks. When you're playing like a baby Lego, you get the big bricks, but you can only make a big duck. And then you grow up, you get smaller bricks, you make a nicer dog. And then you, and then you get techniques and you make a car and the stuff in there. I just love Legos, so I have to talk about Legos in every talk. Uh, select tree is a, just a simple way to select a tree. Get selected is once you select it, I want to know what I have in my, um, what text am I looking at. Set selected will be a way to replace it. And um, clear selected, a way to, to erase it, get text, get the content. So yeah, you do see that this is actually, maybe I shouldn't be making functions for so little code. Why not? You get a help page for it, you get all the good stuff on top of running the code. So it's a nice way to, to wrap your, even one line of code could be a function. If you want to detail what this line of code does, if it accepts parameters, of course. Uh, get sub tree, well, here we go. Nice up, yeah, nice up is cool. So because sometimes the like, let's say uh, I have a comment get date, but like you want it to look nice. So, oops, nice up. And it just puts the capital on the front uh, on the front letters. <laughs> no, but because the people are going to look at your code and they're going to say, oh, you see, he types and he doesn't like capitalize the first letter, or the opposite, he capitalizes his if, and you shouldn't do that, or he does his uh, indentation the wrong way. I know, I learned code, uh, the street code. Nobody, I didn't go to school, so. <laughs> The way I code is the way I taught myself to code. And I do find somehow, have a look, somehow for readability, the guys who are spacing every tab and stuff and every curly bracket and opening on a different line, it go, for me, it ruins your readability. Whereas here, if I look at a script, it's a bit like Python or every indent is cleanly, the, it's called the Ratliff style or flagpole. You can look it up on Wikipedia. It's an existing style. I did not come up with it, so don't comment. Sorry. Uh, and then a write block is a simply a way to insert the text I want to insert in, uh, in the block that I'm looking at. Then we have a bit of controls. So these are the ones you saw, and this is where for I was doing some really dodgy stuff for uh, VS Code. When I didn't find the command to do it, then you still have keyboard shortcuts to do it. So I was doing it using send keys, which is like very bad practice because as soon as you move out of the window or you touch something else and you're sending keys to somewhere else and it gets messy, but I didn't have another way to do it back in the day. If I find a way with the PS editor, I might, uh, I might update this. But simply this is a, a quick way to get a new script thing. For example, um, what else do we have? Set cursor. So this is simply a way to uh, put the cursor where you want. You understood that. Go to line is a way. So like, for example, if I do uh, get error, there's no errors in here, I guess. But I could do then uh, line uh, 905 quickly and just go there and start changing my error. So it's because like, when you got a profile of 4,000 lines, finding the right uh, function sometimes is hard. So I can also do like find function and start tabbing what's in uh, what's in the script. And then if I press enter, he's going to take me there. And then I can start to. So it's just a very I don't know. I was trying to have fun and manipulate the the script pane from the from the console. And it works actually quite good. I think I can say top, and I go to the top. Maybe I been like consistent enough to do bottom, yeah, so <laughs> not bad, proud of myself. Uh, yeah, I should find it instead of moving for it. Some people are following, 700 how much? 700-ish, bar, jackpot. 
<laughs> so those were the functions. Let me check what I have. Subtree, we did, we did, we did. That's uh, that's about it, I guess, for the for the, the 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 functions in the module. I I can't really show you more than this because, like I said, I, I didn't have the real demo. Uh, so as an excuse, I thought I would get you all a slice of pizza. Are you good? Let's do this. So what's happening here? So because yeah, what I could do is get you an emoji pizza. That would be cool. That'd be cool, right? But here, when I say pizza. It's not like hard-coded pizza, it's fresh pizza, delivered, you order it online, he goes get it, he brings it to you, and I'll show you the code also. But if we say pizza, it looks the same, but it's not, it's fresh. And let me just show you why. Uh, get pizza, uh, find function, get pizza. This one I stole from Lee Holmes. Yeah, yeah, Lee Holmes does some really cool stuff. And it was a one-liner to go fetch emojis from, uh, from um, Emojipedia. So here, the, the emoji you get as a pizza is freshly fetched from Emojipedia. And this is just like to finish again on select string, one of my favorite uh, PowerShell command. The cool stuff happens here, so we go. I go to the Emojipedia with the invoke web request. I get the content. I split it on every line. And then I simply select a line with an H2 uh, header. And I make a funky regex that captures. I, can, I, I wrote it, but I cannot reread it. <laughs> <laughs> We're all the same. This, I, I'm, I know we all do it the same, except Matthias can read it in Danish or something. It, it just it just pops out, and then we look at the matches. So every time you do a select string, he stores it in the matches. I group. I take the first one. I look at the value, and by doing so, you just get the emoji straight from. Oh no! Sorry, we wanted pizza this time. Oop. Voila! So you all got pizza. Um, we're going to do questions, and I hope you have any, uh, maybe serious, more serious than my presentation. But I, I've been asked to present this, so I present this. It has no production value or anything. It's just like a way of showing that if you spend enough time in front of like enough evening time, usually it's dark, it's late, you understand stuff. And that's what I love about PowerShell is that compared to other shell, it gives you there's a structure and a logic in there, including a proof verb. I'm not doing this just because I got, I, I understand why. A very, like you can intuitively start to think what you're going to look for. I'm going to get something. It's about the DNS or get command DNS. And then you get them and you get the help and you look at the examples. And very quickly you can be autonomous in PowerShell with like three commands. So get member, get help and get command. I think once you have those three, it takes you about a year to finish on stage here uh, presenting uh, your results. So this is, for me, the, the, the big fun of PowerShell and the big, the big power of it is that the, the, the step to get to results was not too high. So I managed to do it, and now I want to learn C Sharp and other languages. It's like a gateway drug or something. So I'm enjoying it, yeah. I get a kick out of it still, so it's all good. Um, Summary, it's amazing what you can do with PowerShell when you have way too much time. Just do it and uh, come and share the fun. I find the PowerShell community very engaging, very fun to be with. So the stage is yours for next year, all of you. We want submissions. Site and demo code will be on the, on the GitHub. I'll find the, the CSV monkey um, that ran over the CSV if you guys want to try and write. Oh, I didn't show you those CSV, did I? Yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. It would be cold. You had pizza already, so it doesn't matter. And um, questions? No, not really not. I didn't expect like that. <laughs> I didn't really expect that, so I'm just going to thank you. And if you really have any questions. Oh, Matthias. Uh -uh. So before you showed these uh, different theme functions. Oh, the function to, to can, set an emoji, yeah. Yeah, can, can you have a look at that? That's a good one, because I, I was trying just to write, so if you want to write a prompt, 
where is it? What you can do simply is override the, the prompt function that, that exists. Now, when I try to do this uh, programmatically, this fails, because I'm probably not in, a, in the right context. So the way I found to do this is a bit, is, uh, I also know it's a technique used in, uh, in hacking or to, um, to create in-memory modules. So I'm just going to find it. Uh, I call this one. Let me do this. Let's be efficient. There's a function somewhere called set prompt. Probably. Yeah. Do you see the logic of PowerShell? I'm looking for something to set the prompt, and I called it set prompt. So find function. <laughs> find function set prompt. And this is where it happens, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Null equals new module, script blocked. Yeah, I use, I use alias in my own scripts. Good. Uh, just because I don't know why. But that's how, you, how I manage to do it uh, when my profile loads, is by creating a new module in memory for this session, and then uh, passing it the same text that you saw earlier. And then I'm just... Uh, ampersand or invoking this, uh, this function to make it run. Yeah. So yeah, this is a, a cool way to like write your own modules in memory if you're doing any offensive operation. It will be nowhere on disk and you can write a whole module a la Daniel Bohannon with some like string manipulation so it's never caught. It's quite a cool, uh, a cool way to do it. Yeah. Any other question? Then I thank you and uh, yeah, have a nice uh, evening. Uh.